well, the, the first thing that I would say is you is you've got to really have the commitment and want to do it. Um, because, because it's labor intensive and you're not going to make a lot of money. I mean, when, when I say that ACE is a nonprofit, uh, that we're a nonprofit because it takes some philanthropy and donations to support a microcredit uh, organization in this, in this country because you're not going to charge as much for interest. Um, we calculated, and uh, program in New York has also done some calculations, that in order for a micro credit program to be self-sustaining in this country, we'd have to charge 34% interest. And that's not something that any of us want to do. We didn't get into to this to, um, to charge those, that high an interest rate. That makes it really hard to pay back. Um, the other thing is the circle lending that you hear about um, that Dr. Eunice is, is so famous for. That type of circle lending in our experience and in most of my, my colleagues' experience does not work as well in this country because we're so individualistic. Um, you know, and, and we don't live close together in communities um, like they do in some other countries. And if, I mean, we're just not as interdependent. So if you don't pay back your loan, that, I'm not, I don't care whether you pay back your loan. It's not going to affect me. I mean, the way a circle lending works is everybody in the group has to care that everybody else pays back their loan. So if um, Fatima's not paying back her loan, that means I can't get a loan if we're in the same circle. But in this country, it's a, the motivations are different. Not that we don't care about each other or need support. I mean, I just talked about that when we talked about uh, confidence and building networks. Um, but we're still financially, I think we tend to see ourselves as a lot more independent. There's a wonderful program at Emory right now. It's called uh, Village Capital. And they are very interested in, in connecting with other universities uh, in the city also. And I think some of the Agnes Scott interns and students would be interested in it. It's done through their social enterprise program. And the reason I know about this program is because we do the loan servicing for it. And the model that they're using is very interesting. It's a project they're doing outside the campus. It's, I, mean, I don't even think you get credit for it on, on campus. But they are doing um, a group in Clarkston which is a community that has um, many refugees and immigrants. And you apply, and if you're selected to be part of the Village Capital Program, then you go through with the same group. It's kind of like the pair group, it's a circle lending. You go through the same, uh, with the same people, about a 12-week program where you, you learn about different way different important things for running your business and create a business plan and they bring in different speakers and so that you're helping to build a network of uh, bankers and and people like us that can help all those those nascent entrepreneurs at the end of the 12 weeks mm. then they do three loans of ten thousand dollars each two three of the participants in the group and the group itself votes on and selects those three participants. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, we noticed was that uh, there was the, you know, the comments you made about confidence and what women have uh, or don't have when they start off this uh, this 
venture into the business world. Um, that I found that to be very interesting. There was a similar line of thought about women um, in in Asia and other places not getting involved in politics because there was less confidence from the community um, perspective that these women would not be good political leaders because they don't have the necessary experience. Um, it sounds like the women who are going into business are facing similar you know, stigmas against it. Um, is there anything else that you, your company does to kind of work with them to increase their confidence level other than what you mentioned about, uh, about the networking and also hear, telling each other stories? Um, we, we, not right now. Mm -hmm. um, the the WISE program, we just kicked that off. It's part of the Clinton Global Initiative, and we kicked it off in January. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've got that, that group of women together with our clients as advisory, so that we can continue to delve, in, in, delve into it and figure out with other women business owners. What, what are some methods that are going to get to the core of building confidence? I mean, success always builds your confidence. And, you know, like for some of our, some of our people, like Aisha, the woman that has uh, Sarah Care, I mean, one of the things we've done is, is been very intentional with her about providing her opportunities to do public speaking, to, um, go occasionally we get involved or, or invited some of the staff might get invited or one of my board members might get invited to some some more special to to see someone like uh, Cat Cole with Cinnabon or Sarah Blakely and so there's an intention to to pull Aisha in and some of the other women and to attend some of those kinds of events. I mean, that works as long as you're dealing with a smaller number of women. But, but when you get to where you've got hundreds of clients, I mean, that there will have to be different ways. Because that real individualized service is very expensive. What is the interest rate and does it change depending on the type of loan that you take out? Mm -hmm. Um, the average interest rate is between 8 and 11 right now, um, which is actually pretty low. Um, I've had people say, 8%, that's high. Well, it's not high. Um, what they're looking at is the signs you see on, on the side of the road or hear about mortgage rates. I mean, lending for a house and property is a lot different than lending when you don't have any collateral. Um, and small business is some of the most risky lending that there is. Mm -hmm. And you know, actually a business credit card, um, I don't know if, if any of you looked at those, I mean, credit cards are, are gonna get up, they can be up as high as 18 to 25%. In Half the Sky, we read that um, about 20% is the average rate of um, interest rate for those parts, so 20 to 30%, I think. Um, so that, so 8% is yeah. is really great here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know when you're for those people that are on the call that that are finance people, you know the the, the length of time that you have a loan out really. Um, really is, some, is, is, is m more important than just the interest rate. Because see, if you, it's, say you're, you're borrowing $100 and you keep that, it, it, I mean, you only keep it for six months and you have a high interest rate, so you end up paying the percentages, it may be high, but in actual cost, you may only be paying $10 for borrowing $100. So, um, it, sometimes it's not apples to apples by just looking at interest rates. You have to look at the length of the time of the loan too, and the amount. Have you ever seen or experienced any women in the professional or corporate field being judged or suppressed or not given the opportunity just because they're women? 
Um, so is that something that you've seen actually um, either today or um, has that changed over time? So I'm not sure how, if you feel comfortable answering that question. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I mean, yes, in my career, I, ha I mean, I have seen it as, let's see, as, as blatantly as um, just uh, a group of, of men standing bis in a business situation where we're standing there together and one man walks up and gets introduced to all the men but me. I mean, I mean that kind of stuff happens even today. Um, I, I actually think, I mean, I don't have proof of this, but I, but I think that one of the difficulties in raising um, money for ACE in the earlier days had to do with the fact that um, I was a woman and our board was, was all women. Um, I, I don't have proof of that. But it just as as I look at other either economic development organizations or nonprofits, and then some we hired a company to do an analysis of our financial health and uh, look at the potential for raising money. And one of their recommendations, and this was in 2010, was um, uh, to get some heavy heavier hitters. Mm -hmm. um, and diversify our board, and and our board had plenty of diversification other than male. <laughs> so, right. um, yeah, I think it I think it does happen. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate uh, you answering the question because it it's definitely something that has changed over the course of time. It seems like, and we're definitely improving. I know that it's some, but I feel like it's something that. Um, we're at a stage now as women in the United States that we need to be aware of what are potential barriers and build the skills to overcome them. I think that it is quite possible to overcome a lot of these barriers now in the United States by simply uh, preparing yourself with the confidence, um, knowing how to work a room, not let um, a fear of uh, discrimination against our gender to get in the way. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to play the boys game necessarily, but um, being willing to speak up. I love those ads that talk about uh, how women often say they're sorry. So changing the way that yes. we talk. Yes. So there's a lot of things we can do to empower ourselves. Yeah, and, you know, I think that's, that I see it differently in your age group. Um, we have a 24-year-old um, loan officer and then, I, you know, I talked about Randall, who I guess she is going to be in her early 20s, too, because we just hired her from Agnes Scott. And you know, I, I see my own assistant who, who's sitting here, who's been with me for almost 10 years. And uh, she was a young woman when she came. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I see the, the difference. Um, the the younger the younger generation is is a lot more willing to say what they think, um, wear what they want to wear. I mean, e even like like you know, I have on a black suit and a white. Th I mean, I, you know, it's because my generation that's that's good on a video screen and also you know just your classic you kind great. of business attire, especially if you're in finance. And I see the younger women are just more bold. And I like it. I well, like it might be because you're uh, having a lot of Scotty interns because <laughs> you are known for being bold. And uh, it's really... Right? Well, you know, you have such a great benefit um, being educated in an all-women college. And I mean, I don't have to tell y'all all, this, all the, the research about, about that. 